Uh, good morning, everybody. On behalf of the steering committee uh, of the prize, Professor Jean Busquets, Professor Josep Parcelis, and I, we would like to welcome you all uh, to this dual format event uh, in this graduation hall at Barcelona School of Architecture and also uh, on the UPC YouTube uh, channel. This is an, an, an event organized by uh, Barcelona Urbanism Laboratory, LUB. Once again, it is a great pleasure for us uh, to honor the memory of our esteemed uh, Professor Manuel de Sola Morales through this European Prize. As you know, the aim of the prize is to create an international showcase for the best PhD research on urbanism in Europe. It has not been easy for the jury to work around uh, the pandemic restrictions, but with great professionalism and extraordinary dedication, they have been able to successfully meet the difficult challenge they were entrusted. So we would like to thank first Professor Olalia Gomez Escola, acting as jury secretary and representing the law. Architect uh, Carlos Gomez Agustí, representing Fundación Arquia. Professor Han Mayer uh, from TU Delft, who will join us online during the ceremony. And we would like to give a special thanks to uh, Professor Alberto Ferlenga, Rector of UAF, Venice, and President of the Jury, who made a great effort to be in Barcelona and share the reading of the jury's verdict today. We also like to express our gratitude to the institutions that support the prize, especially the representative that are um, with us today, uh, on, including on behalf of our university, uh, Professor Jordi Ross, newly appointed uh, Vice Rector of the, the UPC, Professor Joaquim Sabaté, Deputy Head, uh, Deputy Dean, sorry, for the Barcelona School of Architecture, and Professor Julian Galindo, Head of the Urbanism uh, Department. And also the representative of our sponsors, uh, Ms. Sol uh, Candela, Director of uh, Fundación Arquia, uh, Mr. Ramon Torra, General Manager of Barcelona Metropolitan Area, and Ms. Asuncio Puig, the Dean of COAC, the Architects Association uh, of Catalonia. A special thanks goes also to uh, Rosa Faliu and Maria Sola Morales, who are also here today uh, for facilitating always and supporting always this initiative of the world. Thanks to Enrique Sacoet, also with us, uh, for the graphic design guidance, to Exapa staff, who have collaborated in this event organization, and of course, to our small big team at Loop, with our crew at the forefront, together with a group of um, PhD candidates and students. Finally, we would like to thank all the PhD researchers and supervisors from all over Europe. Hopefully, some of you will be following us today. Your decision to submit the award to this initiative may probably have made the jury's decision more difficult, but it has been fundamental for the prize. Urban research is crucial for better understanding the cities, enlightening the path of the complex urban phenomena, as Professor Manuel de, Manuel de Sola Morales masterfully did and taught us during his lifetime. Thank you very much uh, to all the attendees. And now I'd uh, like to pass the floor to uh, Professor Zena Pasarisa. Thank you. Gracias, Carlos. Uh, in a few minutes, we will know the failure of the Manuel Salamara's European Prize. Let me introduce um, 
for those who link for the first time that every two years, the Manuel Sola Morales European Prize recognizes the best university research in the field of urban, carried out by students granted PhDs. This is already the third edition of the world that we started organizing four years ago. In each edition of the prize, the call has received almost 50 candidates from 25 universities of many European countries. It happens also this year. It's a positive sign for us. Perhaps we are beginning to create a point of reference for those interested in the progress of research on urbanism at the European University. The winner in each edition has the opportunity to see the work published in book form on um, Architesis collection, famous one of Archia Foundation. For instance, is already on box stores the work of Renata Prione, winner of 2019. But the jury, also every year, has selected as a finalist a reduced number of the best doctoral thesis candidates. From our point of view, it also has a value a singular value as a way of drawing an overview of research issues. As pointed out in the jury of uh, 2017, shared by Professor Jean Louis Cohen, he said this thesis gives an excellent view of the new tendencies emerging in programs with rather diverse uh, affiliations. And then added, um, even if some national or, or local patterns emerge, it could certainly be said that a sort of a European school of urbanism is currently taking, taking shape. <clears throat> On that way, from the laboratory we would like, like we are going to publish the abstract of the finalist works. Actually, the issue of this year of DUR publishes in monographic format all of them. Um, now, Dur takes the opportunity to read the abstract of the finalists, the mentions, and the winner. It's uh, from our point of view, uh, it's a way um, to continue our commitment to find out and to share relevant contributions on urban culture. It's a way to carry on what Manuel started by launching Urbanismo Revista magazine in 1985 till rather until 92. This is the issue of this year, <coughs> um, made by the jury selection, chaired by Professor Alberto Ferlengo, who I want to thank um, for his presence here today. And let me say just welcome. Um, Jan Davana, Olalia, gracias per la feina com a secretari del jurat, com a membre del jurat. Espero que hagi valgut la pena. the reading of the veredict. I would ask uh, Professor Jordi Ross and Joaquim Sabaté to join me on the stage, please. <laughs> With its third edition, the Manuel de Salo Morales European Prize has consolidated its role as an observation point that provides a view of the most advanced urban planning and event planning and event research in a contemporary global context. Furthermore, the award provides anyone who engages with cities and their surroundings with a broad perspective of current contemporary information, such as issues related to urban expansion and environmental crisis. Despite its short history, the prize serves as a review of the evolution of research in this field, with its ever-increasing complexity and essential cultural contribution to the study of cities. The award complements the development of this new culture within urban studies, providing up-to-date and in-depth insights into urban phenomena and their history with interdisciplinary frameworks capable of addressing the responsibilities of the environmental crisis and socioeconomic inequality. This new culture is centered in Europe, yet it has influenced research methods in many other parts of the world and can today act as a tool for positive urban transformations. 
Manuel de Solo Morales made a vital contribution to this new approach, which is the ability to combine analysis and design, to connect history with contemporaneity, and to assess real world context, the impartial yet creative insight. The third edition of the award saw the participation of 43 candidates from 16 countries Spain, Italy, Serbia, United States, Greece, Belgium, Austria, Romania, Chile, Bosnia, Brazil, Portugal, Mexico, Germany, Switzerland, and France. The candidates were supported by professors from leading European universities who, in turn, represent a wide network of academics. After reading and discussing the thesis, the jury awarded the title of finalist to four researchers who, in alphabetical order, are the following. Jaume Blancafort for the thesis Participation and Collective Creation in the Architecture of Lawrence Halprin, the Take Part Methodology in the Participatory Processes of Urban Projects, a work defended at the Universidad de Alacant and developed under the supervision of Juan Domingo Santos and Maria Elia Gutierrez Moto. The primary objective of Jaume Blancafort's research into the work of Lawrence Halprin is clear from the outset to highlight for contemporary urban planning and architecture the importance of Halprin's participatory methods to urban transformations in the United States as developed during the 1960s. Starting with case study analysis, the research goes on to investigate the emergence of a state farm methodology that encompasses both the knowledge of cities and their design. The methodology questions user designer and designer administrator relationships and the wider urban architectural culture of the time, simultaneously providing significant food for thought to today's urban planners. Secondly, Jerome Steven for the thesis Occupation and Cities, the Proto Urbanism of Urban Movement in Central Sao Paulo defended at key Leuven and developed under the supervision of Bruno de Molder, Nadia Somek, and Anne Kassiman. Jerome Stevens' innovative and well-documented research is backed up by his own experience in the field and reveals the complexities and contradictions of Sao Paulo. The work centers on the relationship between city growth and the ways in which its students and previously abandoned spaces are inhabited. The result is an original portrait of Sao Paulo in which its history is intertwined with contemporary social movements and the occupation of the city buildings. At the same time, the research proposes an important line of inquiry for future study and a new geography of the city based on cultural practices. This could form the basis for an alternative to the official urban planning map as defined by the ruling classes. Thirdly, Jose Javier Pincherot with the research The City of San Sebastián before 1813, claiming its presence. A work carried out under the supervision of Ángel Martín Ramos at the Universitat Politécnica de Catalunya, Barcelona Tech. Jose Javier Pichabrot's research addresses a challenging theme, the reconstruction of the history of a city that no longer exists and of which little documentation remains, San Sebastián before 1813, the year it was destroyed by the English fleet. To be able to reconstruct what was lost, the study analyzes the city as it is now in detail, alongside the testimonies of the past that survive within it and documents relating to its history. Using 3D visualization, the research recreates a geography and a history that were partially lost, 
filling a significant knowledge gap with regard to San Sebastiano, while at the same time experimenting with a new methodology for the field of urban analysis. And the fourth and last finalist is Mafalda Batista Pinheiro Pacheco for the thesis Puzeta, a unique fishing village, supervised by Joao Vieira Caldas and Renata Malcena Araujo and defended at the Instituto Superior Técnico of the University of Lisbon. Following the growing interest in small towns and in the almost total absence of historical iconography, Mafalda Batista Pinheiro Pacheco's research reconstructs the origins and evolution of the fishing village of Fuzeta in Algarve, Portugal. Through the analysis and redrawing of land registry documents, this research project investigates not only the history of the village, but also the development of a traditional construction technique used in its vaulted buildings comparing it with similar cases along the European coast of the Mediterranean. The study traces the urban history of a small settlement that lacked history, rediscovering knowledge that had been lost and that formed an important part of the identity of the village and its population. Traveled to Barcelona today. And so these were the four finalists' research, and I have, the time has come now to unveil the works awarded uh, with the special mentions. I have to give the floor to Professor Han Meyer, member of the jury, who will join us on streaming from Bell. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and I must say I'm uh, very sorry not to be able to attend this important cer ceremony, but I'm very glad, of course, to be to able to contribute in this way and without mouth cap. So uh, I hope this will go well. Uh, the jury awarded four special mentions, uh, as earlier already uh, explained, and the first of one of all of them is the special mention to Claudio Forgacci with his uh, thesis on integrated urban river corridors, special design for social ecological resilience in Bucharest and beyond. This thesis was done at the TU Delft and supervised by Arja van Timmeren and Machiel van Dorst and co-supervised by Jorgen Thiel. Claudio Fulgazzi's interesting and very well documented research on Bucharest differs from other studies conducted on the Romanian city. This is largely due to its transdisciplinary approach and its investigative point of view, which focuses on the most recent aspects of urban transformations. It takes the relationships of the city with the rivers Dambovitia and Colantina as the primary cipher to understand the city. Using this relationship as a starting point, Claudio Forgacci retraces the history that formed the contemporary capital through critical analysis of its urban history and the ecological dimensions of its development. The picture that emerges presents not only an unprecedented vision of Bucharest, but also an outline of the main themes and opportunities that could characterize its future development. Okay, the second special mention is to Julia Testori with her thesis, Kitopia collective city-making, participation and autonomy in Quito's urban future. Done at the UAF in Venice, 
supervised by Paola Vigano and co-supervised by Viviana Dauria. While addressing a specific aspect of Ecuador's social and urban traditions, Julia Testori's thesis offers a series of reflections on the process of shared decision-making that characterize global urban development. The research focus on the relationship between the ancient practices of community participation in urban management and construction and the inclusion of the concept of buen vivir in contemporary Ecuador. In particular, the practice of Minga, the community gathering and working, is investigated in relation to its recent reintroduction across three case studies in Quito, where it is linked to contemporary social movements. In addition to its highly original theme, this thesis also stands out for its striking, for its striking visual content that diverges from current trends in visualization techniques. Director of Fundación Arquilla awards the Mention Diploma to Julia Testoria. Then the, four, the third special mention is to Robert Sega with his thesis on new alpine ecologies, industrialization and construction of the city territory at, done at the EPFL in Lausanne, supervised again by Paola Vigano and co-supervised by Giacchino Giarofoli. The thesis of Robert Saga deals with a mountain belt that has been largely unaffected by tourism, but is currently enduring a profound crisis. The project investigates the area's characteristics formed in recent de decades to identify possible opportunities for the transformation of its current critical state. The period investigated covers recent transformation, recent industrialization, the planning-oriented perspective is original and well-developed, relying partly on direct observations from a variety of viewpoints. For example, from the ground, by walking, and from the air, traveling by plane. The research includes comparative studies of similar territories in the Alpine area between France, Switzerland, and Italy. The dissertation concludes by proposing a series of guidelines for their positive transformation. The proposed guidelines are based on respect for the environment and the production of clean energy, addressing the impending energy emergency and degradation caused by climate change and the current economic crisis. Then the fourth and last special mention is to Tony Vidal Gordi with his thesis, The Atlas of the Port of Mao at the University of UPC. Barcelona and supervised by Magda Maria Serrano. The port of Mao, which is the main port of the Balearic Islands, and the city that surround its deep inland are analyzed by Tony Fidal's Jordi study in a detailed anatomical breakdown of its various parts. The research work is divided into two volumes. The first resembles an exhibition catalog with examples and analysis of prevailing architectures, starting from the beginning of the city's architectural history to the present day. The second volume shifts the, the perspective 
away from individual works of architecture to investigate broader, more complex issues raised by Mao. The research work gradually recomposes the history of the city, starting from the special relationship between the port and in, in the infrastructure and the urban settlement. Construction projects completed or otherwise, political and economic events and current criticalities are analyzed. In the naming of this project, Tony Fidel Jordi uses the term atlas, which explicit reference to the Warburg atlas. However, the research can be understood in a variety of ways as an in-depth interpretation, a guide and a catalog. Yet overall, the work is characterized as a project undertaken by an architect for whom Mao was not only the subject of research, but also the background of his life and his work. And now the moment to know the winner of this third edition. We give the award and the stage to Alberto Ferlenga, president of the jury. Well, we are in the most important moment of this uh, event. And, but uh, let me thank, before all, uh, Eulalia for the, for the perfect organization of, uh, of the jury. The jury, Han, where is it? Han Chauan <laughs> from, from uh, Delft, and uh, the committee, my old friends, uh, uh, Carlos uh, and Juan. Um, but uh, I want to, before to, uh, to, to, to give uh, the name of the winner and to, to, to read uh, the report uh, of the jury about the winner, I want to spend some word about uh, um, well, the, the figure of Sola Morales, of Manuel. And let me, I, I, I'm sorry, but I, I want to, to, uh, to say this uh, in, in, in Castellano. When, in, uh, uh, me, discul me disculpo por no saber el catalán, pero eh, yo creo que me gusta hacerlo en castellano. Hace, hace, hace un año, más que un año, estábamos acá en este mismo espacio para, para hablar de los 50 años del Lube, de, 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 de Manuel y de la importancia que volver a, a investigar algunos temas. Y yo creo que esto ha sido un momento importante, un momento de discusión importante. Yo me recuerdo con particular placer de este, de este momento. ¿Por qué es importante volver a estudiar los escritos, los proyectos, lo que decía? El ejemplo en general de, eh, de Manuel. Bueno, yo soy un arquitecto y yo no creo que la historia y la historia de la arquitectura se puede escribir una, una vez por todas. Eso es, un, es algo que puede ser, creen los historiadores. Mis amigos historiadores piensan que se puede, eh, puede escribir una historia de los, los últimos años, los últimos siglos de la arquitectura, sin eh, variación. Cuando todos los documentos se conocen, bueno, esto es eh, el, el frame definido. En tanto que arquitecto, yo creo que no. Yo creo que la historia de la arquitectura es una historia de urbanismo, una historia que, que cambia cada vez, porque cambian las condiciones. Y volver a estudiar algo de, de, que ha sido muy importante, como las investigaciones, los proyectos de, de, de Manuel, en este momento tiene un sentido particular. Y yo creo que nosotros tenemos la eh, responsabilidad, nosotros en general, lo, lo hace normalmente, a nosotros que hemos conocido, yo, lo, yo he conocido a Manuel cuando muy, muy joven trabajaba en una revista italiana que se llamaba Lotus International, eh, eh, que dedicó una, una cover a la, al mall de, la, de la Fustas, eh, entonces tuvo en su despacho a hablar con él, a tomar el material y así. Eh, creo que en general, todos que son interesados en esta particular relación entre arquitectura y urbanismo, por ejemplo, historia, arquitectura, ciudad y urbanismo, tienen una responsabilidad. Y la responsabilidad es de volver a eh, discutir, reflexionar sobre este material. ¿Por qué eh, 
Manuel ha sido eh, importante por muchas cosas, los proyectos, eh, los escritos y todo, pero su figura de intelectual yo creo que ha sido muy importante en general. Eh, porque en los años eh, lo que Europa trataba que un tema muy importante, que es el tema de la, digamos, de la reconstrucción y de la eh, eh, renovación, el movimiento de, la, de las ciudades, eh, Manuel ha sido uno de los eh, bastante pocos en Europa que ha hecho un esfuerzo muy grande para cambiar la cultura necesaria para, para, bueno, para hacer esto, eh, esto, esto trabajo. Eh, la cultura de los, de los arquitectos, la cultura de los que se ocupen de, de ciudad, no es una cultura fija, no es una cultura muy rica, tiene siempre la necesidad de ser renovelada, con nuevos conocimientos, nuevas investigaciones, y también con un esfuerzo de, bueno, con división de disciplinas diferentes. Manuel ha sido capaz de eh, atravesar la historia de la, de la arquitectura, considerar figuras que no estaban consideradas al interior, por ejemplo, del, del, siglo, del siglo pasado, que practicar los terrenos de la arquitectura y, y de, de creer al final que no existía una gran diferencia entre arquitectura y, eh, y urbanismo, cuando el problema era de ocuparse de ciudad y así. Eh, y ese esfuerzo de construcción de una cultura necesaria para atravesar un determinado periodo, creo que ha sido el esfuerzo intelectualmente más importante de Emanuel. Eh, repito, hay muchas pocas personas en Europa que han hecho en el campo general de la arquitectura este gran esfuerzo. Que es un esfuerzo también contra la propia cultura de, de origen. Bueno, yo creo que en este momento, exactamente como estábamos en los años 60 y 70 y 80, en un periodo muy particular, donde necesitaba una cultura, como decía, particular, ahora estamos en un momento que es un momento parecido. Eh, algo cambió, y no solamente por la pandemia, que eso es un, un, bueno, un caso trágico y eh, muy particular, pero al interior de una crisis más general. Cambió el, el cuadro general, la forniz general del, eh, del, del paisaje en el que los arquitectos, los urbanistas se ponen. Eh, por ejemplo, el tema de la sostenibilidad, el tema de la eh, relación con el medio ambiente, así es algo de nuevo, es algo que nos eh, eh, pregunta de eh, refundar nuestra misma cultura. Tenemos la necesidad que, eh, una, 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 una vez más, que reconstruir la cultura necesaria, adecuada, para enfrentarse a una situación que es nueva, donde se puede aprovechar de una tradición de investigación pasada, pero hay también la necesidad de cambiar. Bueno, Manuel lo ha hecho, lo ha hecho en un periodo importante, su, eh, su escrito son todavía hoy extremadamente importantes, desde el punto de vista metodológico y también desde el punto de vista no solamente metodológico, para, para el contenido que, eh, que tenían, y eh, esto, esto premio ha sido, yo creo también, primero, yo creo que es una gran experiencia, muy importante, porque es un observatorio importante en, un, en una Europa que no tiene muchísimas otras maneras para, eh, para verificar la, eh, bueno, el avance de los estudios en este, en este, este campo, ha sido un observatorio para ver cómo empiezan a, a producirse nuevos contenidos por este mismo problema, que es un problema de conocimiento antes de voto. Tenemos que, 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 que conocer los espacios de nuestro tiempo, porque, bueno, no, no es bastante lo que hemos hecho hace 20 años, 30 años, 40 años, por ejemplo, en Italia, las últimas investigaciones importantes sobre el paisaje contemporáneo o el paisaje histórico son investigaciones de 40, 50 años atrás, y todo cambió. También cuando no parece que cambió. Una ciudad que conozco bien como Venecia parece totalmente inmutable, es una ciudad que cambió totalmente en los últimos años. Y nosotros no tenemos, sino muy poco, la idea de cuánto cambió, de cómo cambió. Hay que, hay que ponerse al interior del problema. Bueno, desde el punto de vista, Manuel ha sido un gran ejemplo de esa necesidad de cambiar continuamente, de releer su propia, su propia historia. Y este eh, premio es una demostración que es necesario construir momentos particulares de investigación sobre las, las investigaciones, eh, digamos, y de reflexión general. Entonces, yo espero que va a continuar por mucho tiempo y que van a continuar también los encuentros como eh, es lo que, que hicimos eh, el año pasado, no, bueno, antes de la pandemia, poco antes de la pandemia, unos meses antes de la pandemia, aquí, eh, aquí mismo.
Bueno, dicho eh, esto, eh, vuelvo, a, vuelvo al inglés con la declaración general del, 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 del jurado, del jurado eh, sobre el, 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 bueno, el contexto general de los, de los proyectos. The juries were imprisoned by the way how PhD students of European universities have picked up the changing condition of urban development and the changing agenda of the urbanism by addressing topics in relation to climate change, economic and energy transitions, social equity, and by the vari variety of innovative approaches and original ways of thinking. Next to this attention for new development and innovation, it's impressive that most of the thesis focus on the way how the new condition can be related to long-term historic processes of landscape structure and urban form. So that an ambition to combine modernization and innovation with historic continuity can be observed through the research. And now I can uh, announce the, the, the winner and, and then I, I read the report of the jury about the winner. So the winner is Vin Van Beck. We can The title of this thesis uh, is uh, Forest Urbanism in the Dispersed Flemish Territory. Supervisor Bruno de Molder, University KU Fort Lauderdale. The report of the jury. The thesis explores the possibility of reforesting urbanized landscapes, the dispersed urban patterns of the Flemish territory function as a laboratory to this possibility. The research addresses and shows that deforesting and the need of reforesting is not only a matter of regions like the Amazon River, Central Africa, or Borneo, but also relevant for Europe, especially in the census urban landscape, as there are many in our continent. Reforestation is not only possible, but can also deliver new qualities, spatial coherences, and ways of use of this landscape. The thesis has shown that forest urbanism can be a knife that cuts both ways, contributing to the enhancement and variety of the ecosystem and improving spatial qualities of a slowly organized urban territory. The approach and the result of the thesis are original, refreshing, refreshing and surprising, and challenges theory and practice of urbanism to reconsider the urbanized landscape of Europe in a fundamental way. So, we can uh, give the prize to the... Take this off uh, just for an instant. <clears throat> so I would like to present my uh, deeply felt gratitude in a short reflection on how I arrived here <clears throat> and how Manuel Solomorales is, uh, is part of that journey to arrive here. So I had written here, surely everyone here or a lot of people here are better placed to comment and discuss the work and the thinking of Manuel Sol the Solomorales. But I think uh, the expose that was given just now by the president of the jury was really perfect to kind of um, to, to show that. So what I will do is I do the reverse motion. I, uh, I discuss one project of the Sol Morales, one project that is closest to me, that has most meaning to me, which is the, the station square, the station converse, uh, conversion in Leuven from the end of the 90s, beginning of 2000. So being from Leuven uh, in Belgium, the station square and its surroundings have, uh, have always had a, a great deal to me. Because I remember vividly, even when I was 10 years old, uh, before the project was done uh, by Solo Morales in collaboration with the project team, Urban Project, uh, led by Marcel Smets. Uh, I remember <clears throat> passing there by car, 
pick up the fries with my parents, taking the bus under this typical 70s cover, or even before, the, the feeling of passing by bike on a highway of roads that is actually entering inside the city of Europe. Uh, all of that when I was 10, 12, 10, 11, 12 uh, years old. So then I witnessed the transformation of, uh, of the square and the extension of the city of Leuven from the 19th uh, from the 19th onwards. And uh, I can say I, I only understood a piece of it. And piece by piece, I started understanding this project. So I never understood the full scope of it the moment that it was, was implemented, since I was, of course, uh, um, still very young. So gradually, piece and piece, this project revealed itself to me. And in that sense, also the thinking of Manuel de Solomara. First, I understood it as a new public space uh, with a lot less cars, a new fantastic bus station, a strangely spacious parking, a parking space that was at much more quality than, than you normally see in the parkings. There was no longer this passing in this dark tunnel to get to Kesselo, which is the backside of the, of the station, which is where I live. Um, the car next to the sidewalk to pick up the fries, these kind of dynamics changed. So it was the first, uh, one of the first projects, I would say, or at least in my understanding of the city of Leuven, where the pedestrian scale, the scale of being on the public space, of the public space of the destination, and specifically for the station square, um, was, was, was new to me, a quality that, that wasn't present yet. And I think he has interviewed uh, for his Dr. Honoris Causa at in 2004, Manuel de Sola Morales also points out this specifically uh, this scale of the people, the pedestrian scale, as, as one of the most important or the most important. So it was only much later when I did the European Master of Urbanism, which is uh, part of uh, also um, something set up by the school that, that we're in today. Um, I started understanding the, the project not just as a fantastic new spatial quality, but also as a process of city making. So the architecture project with its range of design qualities, of course you need to be a good designer to realize it, able to supersede itself and transform the city. The buildings surrounding the stations were upgraded, the square became a place, other projects grew from the, the quality introduced at the station and I believe this square was also fundamental in the pedestrianization of the city of Leuven itself. So you saw how the impact of a project is much bigger than, than the project itself. So this is this notion of the intermediate, uh, I believe, or my interpretation of it, that started to become visible uh, through the strategic impact that the project had on the city, something that obviously I hadn't understood before. So it was then after a period of passing at uh, Studio Bernardo Secchi and, and Paolo Vigano that I ended up again at the research group of urbanism and architecture. And in this mindset uh, of the, the research group and under the supervision of my promoter Bruno de Milder, um, I, I kind of expanded this understanding of the intermediates towards the complex urban structure of Flanders. So this is basically the topic of my PhD research. This context is uh, you can consider as everything is urban or everything is non-urban. Uh, so it's completely different from the compact city. This intermediate scale that urban design works on gave meaning in a territory where a collective intermediate scale um, in between this individual occupation of the territory and the territory as a whole uh, was actually missing. So my PhD research developed, um, was developed around this notion of the intermediate forest figures. So the forest becomes the main subject of urban design to kind of steer this territory towards a more uh, sustainable model. One might argue that the research tried to evidence, uh, what the, the, the research tried to evidence is the possible strategic impact of an intermediate forest figure on the dispersed Flemish territory, just as the station project by Manuel de Sola Morales had on the city of Lyon. Or at least that is a kind of parallel that I draw for myself. From, from this research. Finally, as a fourth step in this process of understanding, in the beginning of the year, my professional design office MIDI, in collaboration with with architects, we worked on a competition just north of, uh, Le, uh, of the station, in Leuven North, the railway yard. And even now, I feel like I continue to understand the project by uh, Manuel Sola Morales better. So from, I started from an observer perspective, sort of gradual analytic process of understanding. And the competition project actually allowed to actively engage with the station project through design. 
So it's through the complexity of working with the stakeholders that were on this design competition, that were the same stakeholders also that were involved in this in the, 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 the conversion of the station square in Leuven, that I really was able to understand better even projects by, by Manuel Morales. Um, I, I still remember some, some popular comments that, was, that were made when the station square was finished, comments about the fact that this bus station uh, was too Mediterranean, it didn't fit in this kind of Nordic context, and Manuel de Morales would have just copied this model from a Mediterranean context in the Nordic context. But I can, uh, I, I can, I can just uh, conclude from them that they are completely contradictory to the design philosophy and methodology of Manuel de Morales, who is extremely um, context context uh, based and through design uh, So the station project as a space, as a process, as a strategic intermediate towards city change, as a design negotiation between stakeholders, is really something that uh, serves as a kind of projection screen of my own evolution as an urban designer. So I think. Uh, and this very short speech, I would like to thank Manuel Sola Morales for this evolving experience. I think this award is a very clear tribute to, to Manuel Sola Morales and his legacy. And I feel very privileged to, to having been able to enjoy it at first hand through this project. And I feel honored to be able to, to contribute to that legacy as well. I present my gratitude to the Barcelona School of Architecture, the Urbanism Lab for organizing uh, the, the award. The steering committee that oversees the award procedure and ideology, uh, and that safeguards its continuation as part of the legacy of Manuel Sol Morales. I think this this award is really a great platform for researchers that are also designers or designers that are also researchers to receive recognition for for qualitative needs in the work. I know some of the finalists of the last two editions. I know some of the finalists of <laughs> and special mentions of this edition. So I know they're all researchers by excellence, so I think that demonstrates really the award's importance in our extended. To finish, I owe a large thank you once more to Bruno de Mulder at Geerleu for guiding me in this PhD research. Of course, without the supervision, everything would have been quite difficult. And to end, the sincerely thank you to the jury members for considering and then awarding um, submission from, of my research for the Manuel de Sola Mor Morales Award. I'm extremely honored to be third to receive this award uh, as part of the Manuel de Sola Morales legacy, and I hope there will be many more awards to come. Thank you very much. So much. Les paraules per, per acabar són de grime. Que en una situació com aquesta ens feia bastant difícil imaginar que el tercer premi podia tenir la mateixa alçada i la mateixa ambició que havien tingut els anteriors. Crec que, com hem pogut veure tots, em que no han tingut el nivell també per l'audiència, però també pel les, el rigor en el procés. Crec que en aquest sentit cal eh, entendre que el, que el jurat ha fet molt bona feina i també voldria agrair aquestes paraules finals dels sponsors. Sembla que és molt important que ens hagin suportat perquè això, el recolzament aquest és el que permet la continuïtat d'aquest premi i que em sembla una mica haver arribat en el tercer nivell de totes aquestes entitats. El tercer premi assegura, com també abans deia el professor Perlenga, assegura que el premi existeix i que la gent comença a considerar el premi. També jo voldria veure el premi com una manera que el jurat té la capacitat d'agafar aquests llibres que estan... Sorry. I think uh, the reason that I, I want to I switch is the Catalan is too easy. No, I was saying that, first of all, thanks to everybody, but mainly to the, to the jury for this professional, extremely professional work done, and the sponsors. I want to, not to mention them all because they are in the board, 
to say that I think the sponsor believing that the price is giving something special to the feel of the architecture and the urbanism and to the culture of the university and the research at the university, I think that is tremendously valuable. The fact that the price is already having the third edition, it helps a lot. Because as Professor Berlanga said before, to be the third price means that probably the fourth and the fifth can be ensured and more applicants are waiting for this price because it's getting something special. For me, the reference of a price like that is that the jury has the capacity of being in the shop windows of more than 20 countries in Europe and picking up certain elements that they feel are interesting. And then by selecting them, that the applicants are suggesting through the shop window, and by the vitrines that they have that, I think that refers quite well what is happening in the research in the universities in Europe. But as you can see in some of the prices, that they are reflecting also what happened across the globe. Today we have seen Sao Paulo again, the way cities that they are really very dynamic, very important in the urbanistic terms, that they are also considered as a matter of research, as a matter of excellence by applying to the price. In that sense, I think this is very important. I think the belief that the price makes sense. But like I said before, even that that is offering an, an observatory. I think that's quite important. It's the way that we can see today what happened in the research today. And that is not easy to have that, is the possibility of looking to that place. And that is because of the network. And I like and I appreciate very much the network that's being created. And I think the loop and the team running, um, the team running the, the, the loop today are doing an effort on that. The network of research centers and professors at universities that they are able to have this shop window open, I think that is marvelous. But that is what probably it makes this, uh, this element that we also use from many different positions of different actors. In that sense, I think it's fantastic that, for instance, as some of you know already, that the, the second prize is presented already when the third prize is given. I think this is a, an excellent contribution from Arpia. I think we, we have to say that this is beautiful. But I think what is important is that this project reflects the best project selected by the jury in Europe two years ago. I think I hope that for the fourth, the third, the, that we just being presented but, but we, uh, now before, I think is going to be presented as well. I think this is very, very important. The, the final words for me is going to be to remind, as Alberto mentioned before, is the effort that was done also for the, the 50 years, the 50th anniversary of the loop, that that happened in November. I really like to congratulate the team that prepared this um, summary, I think it's fantastic. Most of, of the, the people, the audience of being probably sharing this experience, I think it was an opportunity. Summarize editing that is not easy. We know that. Eh? It's to produce a book from a large conversation, from a large happening, like was in November 2019. I think this is yeah. Thank you. The team of, of the loop. Uh, running the loop today. I think mean, this is uh, fantastic. <laughs> Alberto Ferlanga said that perhaps should be continued. Why is only the 50th anniversary? Why is not also the 52 or the 55? In other ways? <laughs> that could be a good way of keeping that this idea that in the end we are celebrating, and I appreciate very much your words, Alberto, the way that is more the trajectory that Manuel de Solamorab has established. So a certain principle, <coughs> certain theory that is evolving, it's changing, because also society is changing, but changes according to certain research patterns. And I think that is what makes uh, the discussion that the research are also uh, and the price is presenting quite reliable, quite essential, and in the end, quite seminal for the future. And that will be my, my final words. Thanking everybody here and please, asking you and the people that you are following through the web, please share the, the network, be part of the network, use and consider that this book is already available digitally through the web, as the way everybody can get access to it immediately. And I think that is very important because that, in the end, there is not a lot of research in our field. Probably the most important field, 
we, we talk a lot about the health and the sanitary conditions, all this, that, that's very important. But what is more important than the place where everybody of more than 50% of the population living, which are the cities, the way then the research on the cities, then mostly is done only in the universities and the research center. Then we must applaud and we must to keep that as much strong as possible. Thank you very much. y us, uh, us invitem a acompanyar-nos a un brindis uh, al poder i a, a la marxa sobre els que estem Moltes gràcies.